black and white photography is a lot of fun. In this video I will give you five tips on black and white photography and how that can improve your photography. Coming up. Hi there, my name is Peter Forsgaard and I am an Olympus visionary and a professional photographer from Helsinki, Finland. And before we start talking about black and white photography and how that might help you to become a better photographer, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit that bell so you know when there is a new video online. My channel is all about you getting to be a better photographer and of course about Olympus gear. And this time about black and white photography. Let's start. Black and white photography needs to be planned. You need to have a plan that now I'm going to shoot black and white. If you do it so that uh, you have a bad image and then you try to make it art by turning it to black and white, most likely it won't work. Well, on some images it, it might, but as a general rule it doesn't work. You need to plan ahead. That's because black and white is totally different uh, thing than color photography, because colors tell stories, colors uh, tell us moods, because different colors have different meanings and that might be even uh, on, on different things on different cultures too. And then some colors look exactly the same in grayscale, like red and green, even though they are totally different colors, but in black and white they are exactly the same color. And when those colors kind of disappear or are not uh, distinguishable from each other, they lose their power. And that will happen to some other colors too. So what are the things that you need to consider in black and white. The first thing in the path of learning photography via black and white photography is to go back to your uh, archives and see what your old images look when they are converted to black and white. And see why some images are really nice and why not uh, when some might not be that good. Analyze those and think what are the elements that makes a certain photograph really nice on black and white and some others don't. And of course, if you have taken black and white in purpose, then you might also observe those and see why those images look great in black and white. And with digital, it's really easy. Just press grayscale or black and white in your image editing software. Easy as that. And then the second thing that you really need to uh, concentrate on when making black and white images is the composition. Because you don't have the color to lead the eye of the viewer into the image. You need to learn the basics of uh, compositions or, or different compositions in order to make the image interesting. And that takes some practice. And that's why the, the, the first step was to check out your old images and see why they were good. Now that you uh, maybe know that it is the composition that might be the decisive thing, you can go back to those images that you thought were good and see if it's the composition, if you have leading lines, negative space, uh, rule of thirds, maybe golden ratio, or what is the thing in composition that makes a certain image look good in black and white. Without any uh, concentrating on the composition, those images most likely will be pretty boring because you don't have, you don't even have the color to make the image interesting. And when you go out shooting, look for the abstract because you have eliminated distracting color. Yes, colors can be distracting sometimes to an image. And too many colors might take the attention of the viewer from the real thing. And this time the abstract. Try to find uh, paths, uh, uh, details, patterns, all that kind of stuff. Maybe textures. Those are really, really great in black and white because you remove the distracting color, which take the attention away from the abstract itself or the subject matter in this case. So look for the abstract. And then the fourth thing is mood. Yes, I know, moods can be expressed in colors too, because if you want to have very bright and happy colors, you might uh, tell that, okay, this is a happy image, I feel good, and then taking the colors away might be that the images are more sad and melancholy. And yes, usually black and white images are tend to be more sad and melancholy versus color images. Of course it depends on the images, but that's that's a kind of like a general rule. And that's a very good way of, of expressing the feeling or your feelings or showing something in, in a sad way to make it black and white. 
But as I said in the beginning, don't just uh, go out and shoot color images and then decide later which will which ones will be black and white. It won't most likely it won't work. You need to plan and then you go and shoot out. But it doesn't matter that all black and white images are sad or melancholy. They can be happy too, but it is a bit harder to make an image uh, kind of like uh, send hap how do you would say that to when you look at the image makes you feel happy when you see a black and white image. I don't know why, but uh, it's it's a bit harder. And then the fifth one, the most important thing is light. Or actually, it's shadows that are more important than light. And if you don't have any sh uh, any light, you cannot have any shadows. And shadows are the hardest part in photography. Because that with the shadows you reveal and show things. And light is the most important element on that. Because with shadows, you uh, the object have shape. And when I talked about abstract and moods, that's also a very important thing on those two. Because the light will give you shape and it will affect the mood of your photograph. So concentrate on the light and, and uh, kind of explore the light. Go to the same place on different times of day and see how the light goes. Different weather, uh, when it's sun is shining, when it's cloudy, when it's uh, really dark. See how the light shapes the landscape or how it shapes the subject that you have. Because one good thing is to have a subject by a window and take an image during a different time of day and see how the mood changes, how the shape of the object changes when the light hits from the different angles. And if you have some uh, external light, you can do that like that too and see how it affects. Because when you go out, then you know what kind of light is better for your image. As you saw and heard, photographing black and white will make you a better photographer because you lose the color. You have less elements to build your image. You've got only grayscale and that can be ob obtained with light. And that's the most important thing, learning about light. And what's great about modern cameras, especially mirrorless cameras, you can set the viewfinder to show only black and white images. And that will help a lot when you are actually making those black and white images. It will tell you real time what the image will look like, even before you have taken it. And that's one of the best parts of having a so-called Vusivug EF, EVF and L LCD. It makes a lot easier to visualize the black and white image. And also most mirrorless cameras have black and white filters built in. And if you are more interested in black and white and those filters, you might want to watch that video. There are more information about that. But hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.